Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And we do have some data that hit um, Spanish retail sales. Coming in at negative 3.3. Hasn't as it in the print, but they're saying on the squat, coming in at negative 3.3. We did have uh, German import prices that came in at down three tenths with uh, year over year minus 4.8 and then French consumer confidence at 93 uh, was a poll, but they came in at 94. Uh, as I mentioned, Spanish retail sales, I'm not sure why there's not a print. As I mentioned, uh, they're saying just came in at, what was it? I think it just said minus 3.2. And then we do have a uh, Italian producer prices. Now that's gonna be a little bit later on. And then as we come into the States, we will have at advanced good trade balance at 8.30 Eastern along with wholesale inventories and retail inventories. Uh, that'll be at 8.30, then that's it. That is it then on that. Taking a look at the year dollar, we have moved lower here. Uh, we had a week of close yesterday, um, and there's some concerns with the way the coronavirus is spreading in Europe. It's getting a little bit out of control, uh, so that's that's weighing on it. The dollar's a little bit firmer, but the dollar really didn't do anything, and equities did bounce back somewhat, or a minor bounce back. So. Uh, the strength in the dollar index is more about the weakness in the euro because the euro makes up 56.8% of the cash dollar index. Uh, take a look at the cable. A little bit weaker, but still within yesterday's range. A very, very tight range today. Uh, take a look at the Aussie dollar. Just stuck in the stuck in neutral here, although kind of testing this upside here around the 71.59, um, but a little bit firmer. And we'll take a look at the dollar CAD. Just quick look see. Also a little bit firmer. We had what could almost be considered a, um, a hanging man. It's kind of funny to say that because we hadn't even rallied that much. Sometimes that'll be viewed as a topping type pattern, but it's not like we took off, so certainly not a hammer. Uh, so once again, you kind of view it in the sense of a hanging man somewhat, but we're we're stagnant right now. Uh, we'll go in and take a look at where we are with indices. And Irina says, hello. Um, let's go and take a look, quick snapshot with indices. We saw them bounce back a little bit, and we talked about this yesterday, is what's going to happen? We said, well, those that had to sell already sold, so we thought we'd kind of meander around in here, and that's essentially what we did with a little bit more of an upside bid, uh, although we, you can see we did get a little bit of a, a, um, a gravestone doji in the market, you know, finally did, but we were just up and down with a firmer, a little bit firmer bid. Uh, we actually saw it was kind of weird. I was mentioning, uh, you know, on Monday, Nobody wanted to own Microsoft. They were dumping it like crazy. It couldn't find a bid. Then yesterday, it found a sustained bid. So obviously, they had earnings after the bill. What I'm just saying is what a stark contrast. And so we're kind of giving back a little bit as we came back down. We're testing. So came into this support. We're just kind of hanging around here. We did mention going to the election. It's going to be a little bit tricky because once again, those that had to sell sold. And we could see a little bit of bounce back, which we did. But I think we'd be meandering. And that's essentially what we did in here. And then finally, we broke a little bit lower here. But I'm not really expecting a big direction either one, either way at this point. S&Ps um, somewhat a bit weaker here as compared. Uh, let's take a look at this here. So let's stick, take a look at the NASDAQ. And the S&Ps are actually weaker. You can see here we've leaned to. So we've had, and someone was asking me yesterday, you know, I think Giuseppe was talking about spreads, and, and that's one of the reasons why I don't even look at that, and I trade all the markets separately, and I don't really look at them in a comparative nature. 
because that's what I'm saying is to me, it's every dog for himself. Look at this. Look at NASDAQ. You see, we came off the lows here. We're kind of, we did dip back. We're kind of hanging around here. Look at S&P. It's just down, down, even new lows here. You see what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. They all, to me, they all trade differently, uh, whether it's NASDAQ, S&P, Dow, or, or uh, Russell. And why don't look at them on a comparative basis? Sometimes, I mean, if the s and is holding up a little bit better than, which I think it was, it might have been, uh, I think it was Friday, um, where it just seemed to have a, a bid all day long, if I remember correctly, or I might have been Thursday, and I saw that differentiation, so that kept me with a weary eye on NASDAQ at the time. But other than something like that, I really don't look at them because, like I said, look at that, completely different. You know, we come down here, we bounce, and we just, you know, bounced, had a nice little decent bounce. And I mentioned that, remember, that was that area I had, and I posted that in the chat room. I talked about that early in the morning. That was my level, 11,605. I think the market made it up to just under that, and they fell back, and then eventually we did make it and took out 605 by three ticks, a hand ticks, and then we started to slide back. But once again, like I said, you can see here, now look at the contrast with S&P, just week, week, week. So obviously there are certain stocks that are going to be the same, I mean, like Apple or Microsoft. But once again, like I said, they just trade differently. And why I just look specifically with the NASDAQ and the way I trade, I'm just trying to focus on, on the big eight. And I did see a differentiation, though, the other day. I think it was Wednesday of last week where – the big eight or it might have been Thursday, big eight was kind of doing their thing. And NASDAQ was kind of like deviating a little bit. Doesn't happen very often, but it did. Um, take a look at gold. It's not really doing anything. We're just stuck in no man's land here. Crude oil, a little bit stronger. Don't really pay attention to it anymore. Um, actually, I think it should actually be with December crude at this point. Bear with me. There we go. So there's December crude. Uh, it's certainly weaker. Uh, so we'll go back. So Irene was inquiring about Apple. Well, here's Apple on a daily chart, and we do have earnings uh, tomorrow. And you can see here on a daily, we're still holding above the trend. And that's why I mix them up a little bit, not mix them up a little bit, but I look at them on different time frames. You can look here, if you looked at it on a two hour, you'd think, oh, this thing's under a lot of trouble. You know what I mean? It's a week, blah, blah, blah. They're selling it, blah, blah, blah. But once again, if you look at it on a daily, we're still holding above the trend line. This market, it's still okay. 120 has been pretty key. Well, you can see here, but we're still holding above the trend line. Support would come in right there at 112.55, essentially 112. So $4 lower. Uh, we'll see. You would think that they would do okay on the earnings we shall see it might be more of a fade fade the news type of thing if it comes in better looking at the two hour chart you can see right there so that 118 118 30 this is the real key resistance here, the real key level. And it isn't this anymore. Uh, it's actually right here. That's the key one right there.
you can see here, here, and then they come back here, press it again. I mean, there's the wicks are sticking up all over the place, but this is it right there. Essentially, it's 120. Um, but on a short-term basis, you'd be looking at that 1830, but it's still above the daily trend line. Um, I'm thinking if they do come up here, maybe they kind of fade that. Once again, you have to figure that people are going to play ahead of the election on the defensive. So that's the way I'd be looking at everything. Allow bounces like we saw that in the NASDAQ. But once again, going to the election, people are going to be playing defense. We talked about that yesterday. A lot of people were saying they just want to go and be flat uh, because of the moves that we saw. Um, it's still everything still points uh, to a Biden win. And, but I think a lot of people are saying they don't want to be surprised like they were in 2016. And uh, so they think it's just easier to come in after the fact or maybe once some of the data comes in. And if that's the case and it's a Biden and it's a blue wave, then they'll buy the equities, sell the dollar. So that's a take on that. You can see Microsoft kind of bounced back a little bit, but still nothing to write home about. Amazon's still looking pretty strong here. Look at that. See that here? If you think about it, equities are doing pretty good overall, well, with the exception of the way the S&P is acting, but I'm talking about the, the NASDAQ. Because if you think about, you would think that we'd probably be in the situation with the, the way the S&Ps are trading versus the way the NASDAQ is holding up. I mean, the S&Ps, you know, think, okay, they're fading them into the election, but the NASDAQ's kind of holding up okay. So uh, definitely a, a, a change there. I mean, well, it's a good contrast. Um, Irina says it's it's too risky to go long equities. No, uh, long uh, to go long into the um, earnings. No, I'm not saying that. Uh, here, hold on. I'm saying is that if you do go long, um, right now the immediate resistance is 1830, and this 120, you can see that we're looking on a daily. Um, this is on a two hour right now. Let's switch it back to the daily. I guess it's better to stick with the two hour because we know that the daily they're in good shape um, overall. So support is going to be 112. But I think that with Apple, I think I don't see them necessarily, I don't see them disappointing. We haven't had um, the Apple, the iPhone sales to say we've had a measurable impact. My guess is they'll probably come in uh, okay, maybe even a little bit better than expected. So I think that that. If you see a jump, I think that it would be a fade the rally as people are going to use a strength to get flat into the election. Now, it's not like equity uh, futures, you can just completely dump the whole thing. There'll still be people that are long. What I'm just saying is if you were to get long, that you'd want to probably the smarter thing if you're trading in very short term would be to if we do get a jump uh, into earnings uh, is to exit out of that and then just kind of be somewhat flattish going into the election. I think that people, the market is going to be, as I said, trading quite defensively. We're seeing that with the S&Ps right now, but going into the election. Because if you look at 2016, um, if you don't remember how it was, as I told you, looked like uh, Clinton was going to win. Mark was doing okay. As the, the results started coming out and it looked like uh, Trump was going to win, the market just started coming apart more, more, more. And then it just washed out like nobody's business. And then turn around and rebound it all the way back. So because of that, people are saying, I don't want to be put in that situation. Uh, I know what I'll do. I'll just kind of stay flattish. And if, if the numbers start showing a Biden in a blue wave, okay, I'll jump on at that time. And essentially that's where you're seeing the market trade a bit defensively. But I'm saying is, um, you know, the S&Ps are on the lows, essentially. But NASDAQ is kind of holding up okay in light of all that overall. So um, a bit of a surprise that we're doing, you know, so well. Uh, bear with me. 
accidentally knocked off my two hour NASDAQ. Hold on, let me uh, reload. There we go. So just go and look into the news. Australia and New Zealand dollars outperform as economies escape lockdown. Sheesh, that was like yesterday's headline. Well, actually, you know what it does is it, well, well, the 28th, but it almost seems like it's one, but it is today's news. The Australian and New Zealand dollars gained on the year on Wednesday as the risk of a lockdown in Europe contrasted with open economies at home while soft Australian inflation figures support expectations of near-term policy easing. The euro dipped to a one-week low of 1653. Euro odd a long way for its recent top at 68.27. The Kiwi was also at 67. The year taken a knock on the reports as France was currently in lockdown for a month after new coronavirus cases hit records across the continent. That comes and look, looks like uh, NASDAQ just took a dip too, but right now. Um, actually, we, we made it up to, um, try to look at here, that thing just broke here. We made it up to uh, same day VWAP, but then we just kind of came apart. Man, I guess it's because the S and P's are so weak. Hold on. Yeah, S and P's continue to push lower. Thirty-three, thirty-seven. So it says the economies are recovering for the lows of the COVID recession. Uh, the recovery will be long and uneven, but it's clearly underway. Um, CBA's head of global economy, Stephen Hamrick, said. I'm keeping an eye on this NASDAQ. It's really just all of a sudden out of nowhere took a hit from 11.525 to now 11.465. Still dropping. Um, some support coming in. At, I think we're at 457. But they're really kind of knocking them here. I think we're overdone here, but I don't want to turn around and buy it. Um, so to support the activity, uh, uh, Hamrick uh, expected the RBA would cut interest rates to 10 basis points at the November policy meeting. Uh, there's more scope for such quantitative easing. Uh, data given out on Wednesday showed consumer price inflation ticked to just up seven tenths. And Euro wilts as coronavirus lockdown worries hurt sentiment. The euro fell against the dollar on Wednesday following a media report that France's government was leaning toward reinstating a national lockdown to uh, uh, contain resurgence in coronavirus cases. Uh, the spike in infections is clearly a concern from France and Southern Europe as Euro upside is heavy. Uh, the Euro was at 1780 on Wednesday. Yeah, that's what I was wondering why it went through me off when it said 1665. Um, traders are bracing for more volatility in currency markets as the virus spreads in Europe. And traders have a bigger focus on the U.S. as struggling to contain the coronavirus. Had the people vote in November the 3rd, and that's it. Let's go move into the analysis. Okay, we are seeing, you see on the two RC has just dropped, and we'll take a look if that's the case across the board.
Wow, we're still now we're in the 11 full, full 40s here in the NASDAQ. We can um, Boy, we're really sucking wind right now. They're really not. There is some support right there, eleven four four two. So if you're short, be very careful. Uh, I'm not careful, but I'm just saying is we are into some support here, and S and P's have some support coming in at thirty three thirty three. So another three more handles. There's we'll be into some support. And you can see here, we're, I mentioned that 11.442, so a little bit of support coming in there. We did go in and drop lower. We just about tagged it. So I'd probably see a little bit of a lift from here. At least on a little bit of a rebound. Um, although faster, I would have grabbed that 11.442. Um, so let's go back into the analysis. And you can see that look already almost up 20 handles, really up over 20 handles. And that's what's talking about the 11442. Because if you look at it right here, you see there? It's 11.442, already up 20, 22 handles. I Like I said, I was almost going to grab it. I didn't want to chase on it. I would end up getting along at 4.51, but still it's even that's 11 plus. Uh, we've already had a pretty decent little sell-off. So let's go on in, um, as I said, go into the analysis. So the euro closed Tuesday at a five-day low. Support on Wednesday will be 1732. And you see where I'm coming up with that, with the resistance at 1819. It's still bullish. We're going to have to get a couple more days below this area here to say, oh, now we're flipping the flag. So it's, I mean, flipping the bias. So it's still bullish, uh, but that's the levels there onto the cable. So cable closed flat on Tuesday in a tight range. Support on Wednesday would be 29.67 with resistance at 30.83. So we've kept the the uh, support and resistance the same. So no changes, which is not surprising considering we're trading still in a very tight range. So this is more about the euro fading than it is anything else um, versus the dollar that is. And into the Aussie dollar. So the Aussie closed flat on Tuesday 
resistance will be 71.82. You can see right in here, thought they might be able to get past 71.59, but they can't. 71.82 was supported 70.87. I think that's, it might be the same too. Yep, sure enough, same. So we're just not seeing much because we had not been moving much except with the exception of the Euro. Uh, Kiwi. So the Kiwi closed higher for four of the last five days. Resistance for Wednesday would be 67.39. We supported 66.46. On to the dollar CAD. Dollar CAD formed a possible hanging man after Monday's rally. Wednesday's resistance will be 3242 with support at 3157. Same, no changes here. And once again, we didn't move that much. I mean, we dipped, but we were, the close in the on Tuesday was pretty not that far off from the close on Monday. Dollar peso. We're still scuttling around the bottom. Dollar peso found some buyers on the test of new lows. Resistance on Monday will be 2120. We're not too far away from there. Uh, we supported 2094. Obviously still bearish. Dolly in. Dolly in closed sub 450 on Tuesday. Support on Wednesday will be 417 with resistance at 488. And so far the low has been 414, so not, not bad. Support at 417. on the resistance. Um, moving into the cash doll index. Dollar sli um, slightly added on to Monday's gains on Tuesday due primarily to the pullback in Euro. Resistance on Wednesday will be 93.43 with support at 92.89. And with that, we'll move into the cross rates. Well, we tried to push these levels here yesterday we weren't able to so now the market's open to a pair back and we're just going to play the levels right there so support would be 69.56 with resistance the close right there you see that that would be 70.02 Let's see the lowest in five months. Wow. Um, so we're seeing, that's where we're seeing the, the problems. And it's really uh, because of all these woes in Europe. Uh, Euro pound. Uh, 
Uh, we had 90.38 previously. For today, it's just going to be this low right there. 90.06, see if they press it further. And resistance is going to be the touch that's coming across here right there which that's probably way too strong, but that's where the touches are. What you see right here, as many touches we can get, so it's going to come in at 9075. Um, next is zero odd. Or is this thing really just giving up the ghost big time? Support is going to be this high right there. It looks like they almost, yeah, they did tag it. Right there, 64.56. Or if they didn't, they came in just a whisper. And resistance is going to be right there. You see the low right here? That's going to be resistance, which is going to be 65.50. And go to the Euro Kiwi. Same here, the Euro is really losing ground across the board. Support, I don't know if we'll make it there, but that would be support. That open, which would be 74.99. They're already weaker to start with. Um, and resistance, just this level right here, 76.37. I don't even know if they could even make it up to that level. Uh, let's just go with the low of these two bars down here. That would be 76.14. And we can now change that to bearish. And let's go to Aussian. Wow, this is really just a, so weak. I think we had the lows before here. <clears throat> we had 74.23, so they're just below that now. And that's what we've been holding there. And they're taking a dip. But the yen is stronger. And uh, I'm not sure how much further they're going to press this thing. They probably want to test those stops, though. Um, but the yen, I know Dolly Yen's already into support. If they can flush the stops, let's just go right there that low, which is 74.10. And resistance doesn't look good. The close right there, 74.71. And next, the guppy. We certainly did weaken and we blew these stops down here. Um, once again, we're not too far away from support, at least on the dollar yen. Um, just keeping it simple, where's your risk? 35.26. And support, I mean resistance, this bar right there, that whip. I don't think they'd make it back to 35.89. So let's call it 35.73 and a tight range day. Mm. If we get a close here, it's going to take it off the bullish thing. You see right here? We haven't closed the day yet, but it certainly looks like it's not going to be bullish anymore. Uh, and then lastly, starting on.
we had 8222. The low has been 8227. Uh, you know what? We'll just keep that 8222 and we'll keep the 8355. Uh, well, maybe not just a close right there, which would be 8297. And that'll do it here. Well, but we are going to be a weaker tone. Uh, the IBEX, I think it said the IBEX made a nine month low. And I know the FTSE said trading at a five month low. So if you look coming into the US session, equities are going to probably be remain under pressure. Like we may come a little bit off these lows, but they'll probably dip back down and test them. Um, S&Ps are at 3334. We know we had that support at 3333. So we'll see how that plays out. But We'll get the bias chart printed, and thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover Webinar.